human beings which are nothing but the replica of nature itself. It is, it is an integral part of the nature and everything boils down to our connection of mind, body and spirit. And this mind, body and spirit Spirit, mind and body, okay, which is the physical body, which is sharir, atma, which is soul and sattva, which is mind. Sattvam, atma, shariram, trayam, etat, tridandava. That's in the box, that quotation. Okay. Lokas tishthati sanyoga tatra sarva pratishthitam. As each level is connected to the other two, okay, your mind is connected to your body, your body is connected to your spirit, your spirit is connected to... Just pay attention to this triangle a little bit, okay? So, when you are... This is soul, this is mind and body, okay? When you were born, the very first cell what your mom created was a combination of sperm and ovum, okay, had an impact of life in it. And that life propelled the growth of creating the whole baby out of it. It did, isn't it? Because the sperm was here, uh, the ovum was there, it would, it would be drained out constantly without, without creating a life, but they two together with life started multiplying the cells and creating a human body. Now, you have a 50 trillion cells in your body and at some point you are dead and your mind and body is just lying there because the, it still has the brain in there, it still has everything in there, but the soul which is the force of life which connects and activates, which drives this bus is not there. Okay, so you can take care of your body by polishing it, by doing all kind of cosmetic surgeries, this and that, and doing exercises and beautify everything. It will still be affected by the state of your mind. Okay, it will still be affected by the state of your mind. Okay, uh, the tragedy what we are uh, seeing in the news last couple of days, okay, is a glaring example that it is the state of this mind which is affecting the state of your body where at some point this body is going to crumble because this the sickness in the mind is going to affect the body there are situations when you have terminal stages of cancers or horrible arthritis or bad physical condition in your physical body but it doesn't affect the human spirit and mind have you seen those people? Have you seen those people who are on their wheelchairs and quadriplegic and they are uh, uh, lively, healthy, happy and very young and vibrant, okay? Witty, great sense of humor and not getting feeling of that crippled body at all. So if at all body was to go, going to only uh, govern the state of your mind, it doesn't really affect that. To a certain extent when you have fever, you do feel crummy, you do feel tired, you feel you cannot continue this conversation. If you have 102 degree of fever, you won't be sitting here and enjoying this conversation at all because your mind cannot that. So with the body being sick, the mind does get affected. But as the mind is sick, the body always get affected. <clears throat> And when we, when we look at mind affecting body or body affecting our mind, we can chase this monkey down by taking care of our mind by doing this, doing that, doing that. But the best way to reduce and regulate and minimize the unwanted feelings of our mind is actually trying to regulate through the soul or self or atma. From that force, you can regulate your mind and body both. And that's why we say yoga is a much better exercise because it's a spiritual exercise which regulates your mind and tones your body at the same time. Okay, You're using your body, you're quietening your mind, and you're creating a sense of spiritual being 
yourself, you're connected with that state by that slow rhythmic movement, what you're trying to do. So when we look at mind, body, and spirit, it is, it is, a, it is a definite need where we are looking at spiritual aspects in medicine. And it is coming to the forefront of modern medicine where they are calling it as almost a new agey sense of medicine. There's a tremendous amount of talk of element of consciousness, of element of human growth, element of positivity, optimism, element of something training people to create a sense of spirituality in their life. If they, if they have a, a routine of doing a, a heartfelt prayer or gratitude prayer every night, it has a tremendous positive impact on their life and well-being. Okay? Anyone who is, who is having any feelings of surrendering to the universal state of consciousness in any religion, any field or anything will transpire the state of their mind and body just like that. Okay, It's not just putting cathedrals in the hospitals, but it is something where what is the state, at what state what we do in our community, in our lifestyle and everything, where we create that. And so when, when we say spirituality, it is, it is becoming an integral part because now we are realizing painfully enough, painfully enough that so-called alternative and complementary medicine, if it doesn't embrace this aspect, you are missing a huge thing. I go to these naturopathic schools and colleges and it is still a missing thing, okay? The philosophy of life is missing you are, instead of giving drugs, you are just throwing some nutritional supplements at people. That's what you call natural medicine, isn't it? You, you are trying to identify some trace minerals and nutrients and things, and you do the tests and you say, oh, because of this deficiency, you have that because of that deficiency. You are still missing the real natural medicine. I think uh, the Western medicine is much better than so-called this kind of a natural medicine. Because you are not really identifying what the human potential is, where it is bugging, what you can do in order to change the way they are thinking in their relationship, this and that. And there are no tools which are being taught in the hospitals, in the medical schools and colleges where the doctors should become philosophers and healers. The healing comes later. Philosophy comes first. And if you don't have that right kind of philosophy which you can share, radiate, talk to people, then it is going to affect them. It is going to create a problem where it is never going to end that sense of depletion and devitalization and deficiency is what you are trying to find. So when we look at the core principle, in, even in olden days, about what, 50, 60 years ago, uh, it was called as art. Medicine was called as an art. We have stopped calling it as art. We suddenly get into this science-like mode, thinking that we know everything and we can fix everything, and we just can't figure out a way why it could not be a healing art. It has to be a healing art, where you have to understand that what your healing potential could be, and your ability to invoke that healing potential in that person is going to do the trick not by telling, throwing them and reading the blood work and reports and everything. Those are needed to a certain extent, but they are not going to actually invoke the inner intelligence of that person.